what was the switch for you? Because I, I know a lot of trainers and coaches who, they want to do more of the same in order to get clients, which means like, you know, they're, they're hyper-focused on just one or two things, but marketing and sales have like this, like it's like dirty words to use. It's what, so taboo in our industry. What was that switch for you? The switch for me was obligation. And what I mean by that is, I remember saying to people, I can't believe Mrs. Jones didn't sign up for us, with us here at our at Premier Results, at our gym, because we later hear that they signed up at, let's say, LA Fitness for personal training, right? They'd be like, they have lesser trainers, and, and I can't believe she signed up there, and they actually charge like just $5 less, like, big deal. But at the end of the day, I realized I have an obligation. If I'm upset about the other trainers out there who are crappy, aren't as well educated, don't care as much, I've got an obligation to sell you before you go and do something stupid by hiring a lesser trainer or getting a getting one of those informational products from the TV that abdominizer or elliptical right. or whatever, right? The gazelle. Yeah, the gazelle, right? <laughs> God bless Tony Little. I mean, he's made an impact on me. But, but come on, right? Let's, let's, and, and so at the end of the day, I go, dude, I've got an obligation. And so I need yeah. to start being a pussy and complaining about the other guys that got the client. And I need to close that client and it's not gonna be my certifications or my good looks that close them. I need the gift of gab and I need to understand what their pain is. So it's no longer, let's do an overweight overhead squat and see if your heels leave the floor. I'll give them that once they become a client. Right now it's, why are you here? What do you want? Why does this matter to you? What keeps you awake at night? Why does it matter? What is the timeline that we want to achieve the weight loss in? I'll peel the onion until they're crying. Now I've sold you. And I'll sell you my training programs any way I can short of you know, fraudulently selling it to you. Because if I don't, the alternative is lap band, a lesser trainer, the abdominizer or gazelle, and I can't have that because I've got an obligation. So once I said I've got an obligation and duty, my perspective changed and it's like, what do I do then to never let anyone else walk away from me? We look at selling as used car salesmen trying to sell me a feature I don't need. But really it's, and I call it, you're not a salesperson, you're the assistant buyer, you're a helper. You're an assistant buyer, you just help them make the right decision. And the right decision is not lap band because there's all types of issues that could happen with that. They may not wake up from the anesthesia or they don't learn good eating habits so they get fat again. So we've got this obligation. Unless we meet that obligation, people are gonna go train somewhere else and all we're gonna do is try and find a second job, which fuck that, I'm not in the business of having a second job. Yeah. I love what I do, I wanna do more of it. I like the idea of, of reframing and renaming it. You're an, you're an assistant buyer, and now now there's not such a stigma around it. Right. Even if you try to convince somebody that being a salesperson is, is a good thing, if they have that just drilled into their head over the course of 10, 20, 30 years, it's hard to pull out of that. If you can rename it and rebrand it and re, um, you know, just change the mindset around the, the terminology, then it's easier to come out of it thinking a different way. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. It's a reframe.